Uh, I'm EJ Shannon. I'm a crew for We Are Harlot. I set up drums, bass, electronics, make sure everything looks nice for them, get them their waters on stage. Hey, I'm like five seconds away. Okay. Okay. Everything's five seconds away. My responsibility is merchandise. I handle their merchandise, the event merchandise behind me, as well as any band that wants to sell anything at the festival, uh, it comes through here. You want to do it in one central location, patrons are used to that, all festivals kind of do it that way, um, and ultimately it helps sell merchandise, which is my goal. So I inventory it in with every band. Um, for example, Mark was here with uh, We Are Harlot, and we inventory the merchandise. He tells us what to charge for it. We hopefully sell it all, and at the end of the night, we settle out with each band, with the event, uh, make all the patrons happy because they get to wear their favorite band shirt, uh, chances are they meet the band, and hopefully have a blast. So yeah, I'm Brian Weaver, I play bass in We Are Harlot. Um, just got here at Sonic Boom, it's about 11 a.m. right now. Uh, playing at 2.30, um, so I guess what we're going to be doing for the next couple hours is just getting ready for the show, getting uh, our crew back line, checked in merch and everything. Um, yeah, not a whole lot going on right now. Most of the fun happens when we go on the stage and afterwards. We need D Master P coming out of the bathroom. Show us what you got. Oh, yeah. Back it up. Back it up. Mm, 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 mm. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. I'm ready. Me and Danny won't even get off the bus until Master P shows us what a real hallway dance is. Now I'm, I'm feeling it. Things are loosening up. I can almost go out there and play some rock and roll with my sister and my brother. So thank you, Master You're P. You're welcome. Hitting it up. <clears throat> Nailed it. See, so, ladies and gentlemen, the most important part of breakfast, the coffee slam. Black Ole. Look at my eyes. Blow me a sweet kiss. Whoa. See that? It knocks knocks me off knock my feet. <laughs> Bulger's in here. Feet. Oh. Now, now I'm officially ready to kick everybody's ass today. Let's go. This is Danny. We found him. We found him just outside a brothel in um, in Maine. Edging, edging the lawn. Yeah. Tell us about the early days. Well, I was what they call a broth smith. Oh, you thought it was a sex thing? No. I always thought it was about soup. Yeah. Um, I <laughs> I worked primarily chicken stock. Every now and again, mix it up, do a little beef. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, it was a lot of very successful years. And um, they, I changed my name. It was Campbell Soup, but you may recognize it from the from the soup company. They ripped it off me. They named it after me as, a, as an homage to my broth creations. I really, I was, I broke new ground in the um, the liquid nutrition industry. Tell me about Download this year. Uh, Download was incredible. I mean, that's hollowed ground right there. I mean, one of the first things I ever really watched, like on DVD, was like. You know, ACDC live at Donington, you know, 1994. I always watch that DVD like every day. And the so, crowds, the way they were. Yeah, unbelievable. So to stand on that stage and play with all those great bands, Kiss, my favorite band of all time, was the headliner that night, you know. And so it was such an honor. And it was a great homecoming for Danny with this band, you know. And we had just uh, won the Golden God Award for the best new band. And it was, uh, it was very triumphant and very awesome, man. Just an awesome time. And it started raining midway through our set, full on onto the stage. So if you watch the video from that, we're completely just, our guitars are just soaked. And But that's rock and roll. It should be wet and dirty and sleazy, so. Is it sometimes adversity like that that makes a great moment for a band on stage? I, I remember the first the first couple times that I, I was playing and rain intervened. I think it, dev it, it bothered me and bummed me out, but at this point it's, it, it's kind of the curse that follows us. So it's it's almost I almost prefer it now, where it's it's become some kind of a, a lucky charm. If it's starting to rain right right before our show, we know it's going to be a good one. Um, I mean, I've had some to the point where the shows have been cancelled because of it. But you know, a little bit of Mother Nature's wrath ain't gonna ain't gonna stop any rock and roll. Yeah, I mean, uh, L Lunatic Luau. That one, the stage didn't even have side fills or anything on it, you know, so the rain just came in and by our set time there was about an inch and a half of rain on the stage and they're like, oh, we know you guys don't want to play and we're like, no, we're gonna, people paid this ticket. <laughs> we're gonna go out there and play. No pedal boards, nothing, guitars right into the amps. We went out there and ripped it up, it was awesome.
So this is it. Check this out. This is the rock riff corner. This is where the tones come from the way you way even past the gods. Like is there like a is there like a, a Pluto god of some sort? Maybe? Maybe he's the one that sends me down. But this is where the magic happens. This is my pedal board. I'm pretty old school with uh, with sounds. I don't like any effects. So all I have on here, this changes my amp channels. This is a little bit of just extra distortion. This is distortion as well. A noise suppressor to cut off the sound. And then just because Eddie Van Halen's an ultimate badass, I figured I'd put this Phase 9 down there that I never turn on. Even though I do turn on once per show to make my tour manager Joe tell me what song I use in, just to make sure he's actually listening to us play. These are my picks. It's got my face on there. Monster Energy on the back. You can never have too much Monster Energy in your life. And if you eat one of these picks, it's actually the same equivalent as drinking a whole can of Monster. So if you guys are hungry at all or thirsty, just eat one of those. This is, this is where all the magic happens right here, this Marshall. My EVH is in there again for Eddie, you know? So you never know like if he's gonna, he gave me this amp, so if he ever shows up or something like that, I'm like, whoa, dude, I've got the amp right here. I've been using it forever. But the sound comes out of this one. Marshall, a guitar into a Marshall, you can't go wrong. Boom. See the quality of rock and roll? hand towels. Just because we arrive at these shows, you know, like on our, our private planes, which you saw parked out there, and the yachts parked over there somewhere in the river, and you know, 50 maidens carried me up to the stage, we still use stolen hotel towels to hold guitars into place. This is an ESP Jeff George Custom. That's me. And um, this guitar is just great. This guitar actually recorded every note of the, of the album. So, and the fine people over at ESP also put this white knob on here which is awesome because it doesn't match anything else on the guitar. It should be cream. So I thought they really went out of their way to give me that, that white knob there. And this one is named Baby for Baby Blue. It's got, my, put my face on it this time. So if I really don't know if it's mine or if I'm looking, I'm like, I'm not sure it looks similar to mine. I can look at that and then see my name and then know that it's, okay, it's gotta be mine. You know, I was thinking about making this whole thing my face too, so then if I really don't believe those two things, then if I see my face here, then I'm like, okay, it is mine. But this one is uh, my soon to come out signature model. Uh, this one is a prototype. But this is one of the best sounding guitars I think I've ever owned. So, and I've got about 200 guitars. So this guy, uh, he's always gotta come out. So, uh, like all this stuff too, I have my name and my face right here on this case, so then I already know, always know where to sit. Uh, supposedly some people like that. See what I did there? Normally you think it's the bandmates that are the wild ones. No, they take, they take it over. And that's Brian there. Brian usually comes out to watch me set up my gear every day so that he knows like how he should do his. You know, I'm like, just dude, just watch me and stay the course. You'll get it. You will get it. Because you wonder why we have zero dollars? And you know, you see everybody else's nice buses up there and we don't have one. Well, that's compliments of Weaves. He's one of the richest guys in rock and roll. I mean, I think last year alone, you, you made what? 85 million just on workers' comp? Just on workers' comp, yeah. He sued Marlboro, us, Diet Coke, um, who else? Oh, um, uh, My Little Pony, um, Beanie Babies. Yeah. So, Brian has one of the biggest collection of Beanie Babies in his house. And it kind of started from Joe. Joe collects precious moments. So he's got a whole you know, thing with precious moments. And I'll call him, I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I don't know how the dust gets in there. How the heck does the dust get in the cabinet? The cabinet's closed. So he's in there cleaning all the time. So Brian started collecting Beanie Babies, you know? And he went out and got like the Princess Diana and the Lucky Bear, you know, and all those ones. I'm like, I don't think those things are all that expensive anymore, you know? And he's he had like a price guide that you know, showed that there was like a 2000 for the Peace Bear. The thing is, he didn't know that it was like 1993. So then he sued the Beanie Baby Corporation. And how much did you make from that? Uh, oh, you got all free pizza for two years. 3.5 mil. <laughs> See? I mean, entrepreneur, yes. Scam artist, yes. But entrepreneur, yes. <laughs> so that's that. Yeah, what, I, what is... <laughs> What is next for We Are Harlot? What's the next thing to conquer? Next, um, like, what, what's next on your list of, of we, world domination? Well, I mean, we, we have we, we tour until the 28th of October. Yep, we've been out for eight months, so you know, just getting started. Yep. 
So, you know, we're fresh as a daisy. Uh, <laughs> we head over to Japan to do yep. Loud Park. So we, head, we, head, we have, a, we have in, a, in like a week, we head over to Japan, then come back, and it's more US. Yep. And then... Um, we're going to finally yeah. get a little break yeah. at the end of October. The year, finishing out the year for um, the, and we're up for the, you know, the Classic Rock Awards uh, for Best New Band, which is, you know, pretty that's much so like Europe awesome. and Grammy, Grammy, you know, so it's like the real one. So we do you we really care if you win that? Absolutely we do. This one we do because... Yeah, this, no, we have very fragile egos. Yeah. I mean, we won... <laughs> Imagine we, that. We won it's the Golden Gods, tiny too. tiny penises. <laughs> yeah. I and mean, the male ego in general. When you have, when you you have penises attitude, the size you of ours, attitudes like this you've got to have some awards on your wall if you want to get like this. Sure, I believe that. I totally... Backstage I mean, passes don't do it anymore. You need no, awards. are you kidding me? We need awards. I mean, I have like all kinds of crazy stuff on my wall. I have like 27 Five Finger Death Punch gold records on my wall, but I can't blind a blurred out. You can't quite see in there. And so, like, those are mine. Nice. Sultan just said that he had five go missing. This is Mia. She's been sleeping here. She just, this is where Bruno is, the cat. Me, the wolf. Joe. Danny. Snop. And Brian. Our bags. Uh, this is the toilet, actually, speaking of. Be back in a second. Get ready for the waterfall. Is your piece supposed to be dark orange? Hey, yeah. I'm Kim from Like a Storm. Like a Storm! We played a lot of shows with these guys, they're our have. brothers. It's probably almost time for we just to do a whole tour, I'm guessing. Double album of duets. Yeah, just, we have just to. you and I. Don't even bother about the rest of the guys. Why would we? You've time heard them play. For the true talent to shine. Right? Why? All right. Cheers. Good morning. <sighs> Close it. And ball. Close it. Yeah. 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 That was our German bus driver, Matisse. Matthias. Matthias. Yeah. Yeah. No. no. And, and one. Close it. <laughs> no. Nah. So those are the words that we got from him. But by the end of the European tour, we were able to speak complete, perfect German, I guess. That's what he was. Was that German? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, nine. Um, your thoughts on Donington. When you're at a gig like that, are you able to enjoy it from a, stand, a fan standpoint? Can you lose yourself in the moment of somebody that you really like to watch? Or are you forever a student sort of watching how somebody does it, trying to learn from them? That's a great question because I... of all the times I've been, I have still never watched anyone play a download. I've always had bus call like really early on not being able to make it. I remember I wanted to, I've played with Aerosmith there, couldn't see them. Played with Def Leppard there, couldn't see them. Played with The Darkness there, couldn't see them. Played with Iron Maiden, couldn't see them. And I, I never managed to get them. Hang on, hang on, say that again. Say that again. But somehow I was able to go see Kiss that night, who was the headliner. I, I think I, I, I think somebody was having a few too many coldies uh, yeah. in the backstage, as opposed to going out and seeing the set. Well, I, I was a, I was I was I was swamped with press and interviews, except the interviews were drinking. I know all those two. No, the, in, the interviews were drinking, and the press was a bartender. <laughs> <laughs> I got an idea. We're gonna go catch Jeff in the shower. Let's go. Whoop! Perverts. Brian. Brian's been trying to catch me in the shower for I don't know what now, four years. And I'm like, no way. That's why I always shower, you shower with all with my your clothes on. With all my clothes on, just in case he tries to creep in there and catch me in the moment, in this moment. But nope. See, so rock and roll. You don't take any of the gar, the, the stuff off. You just shower with it on. And that's why. Look at my hair's already dry. Hi, Mia. And that's that. How do you take care of yourself? Because, you know, you enjoy your life out on the road, but you've also got to be physically fit to get through sets. Um, what I do is I drink two bottles of tequila and eat Chinese food. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever worry about yourself? No. We don't have time. <laughs> there, there, isn't, there really isn't time. It's funny because, like, Bruno will work out all day and build the temple and, you know, the whole thing. And, you know, I think... You know, the rest of us are pretty pretty wild. Weaves, you know, he drinks Diet Coke and smokes cigarettes all day. And, you know, I'm pretty much like Danny. I, I go pretty wild all day, too. But, um, you know, we never let any of that ever get in the way of the music. 
and that's still the number one thing for us and you, when you see us play you know it's like we have such a great time and we are such lovers of music that when we go out and play we're smiling and having a great time the whole time you know the whole time so we would never let the lifestyle i guess get in the way of the music so we, we keep it in check but shh, don't tell anybody that Won't you run your 